1946 speech, please read it, it's in the pamphlet, beautifully produced by E.B., describes his salvage from Nuremberg, which is humanity's salvage, which is civilization's salvage. And I forgot to give you this. This is the Kleinhans music theater, and that is, of course, the stage from which Jackson delivered the speech, uh, a majestic building to visit today. Jackson makes eight points in the speech he delivers on the centennial occasion. At least eight points. I want to pull out eight and very quickly tick them out. This is him at the podium, and this, to give you a feel for him, is the first page of his reading copy. You can see that he wrote a text. I think he wrote it on airplanes. Uh, he certainly wrote it himself. And he then marked it up for reading with breath marks and emphasis points. And he stressed the following things. Number one, the modern danger, threat, crime, security risk, etc., comes from the educated. Not little people, not obscure people, it's powerful, educated people who are the danger. Yet number two, education, ironically or in a complementary fashion, remains our best hope. And number three, Nuremberg as a topic of education is a new lesson in the realm of law. War, we now know, Nuremberg has established, is illegal in international law, as it has always been, Jackson says, in the moral order. And all individuals, even so-called statesmen, national leaders, heads of state, are now liable for this kind of law breaking. Number four, international law, he emphasizes, also reaches the related evils, the evils connected to war, things like tyranny, dictatorship, violations of minority rights. And thus, for nations, for what he was leaving the international stage and returning to the United States physically, there are choices to be made. And he describes forks in the road. On the one hand, nations can systematize tyrannical power, as happened in Nazi Germany, or as he was observing as he worked in Nuremberg in 1945, 1946, this was happening across the Eastern European nations that were under the domination of Soviet communism. Or, alternatively, the choice could be made, as in the US legal system, to place constitutional limits on majority power. Jackson draws that connection from domestic back to international and says, this is part of what Nuremberg is sending me and us home with. And he says, number six, that Nuremberg brings new higher standards, international standards, to guide the making of those national choices. We allies won on the battlefield and have now established in a courtroom the values of the higher orders, including protections for human rights that hadn't been articulated with that kind of force and that kind of consensus before. That's another part of the education he brings home. Now Jackson's speech, this is another page, you can see a little handwritten addendum on the side, which is about the IMT's conclusion that war was illegal. So in other words, it was typed before the judgment, and then he added in what the court had held, the October 1st part. And on the bottom, in addition about the death sentences, statesmen are liable up to the level of risking their lives. I had to show you this because his day concludes with a dinner invitation. Mr. James McCormick Mitchell, our benefactor, <coughs> invited Jackson to dinner that evening at the Saturn Club, a date I believe Jackson kept before catching the night train back to Washington. Jackson's message, the eloquent text you have, the six points I've itemized and two more I'm about to add, become part of the national conversation. The State Department propagates this through various media around the world because it's a message and he's a voice that states our perspective about what law is becoming. And the University of Buffalo gorgeously produces it in this book, which is the physical symbol of the centennial commemoration. So let me conclude. I want to conclude with a coincidence and then with Jackson's two final points. The coincidence is a little bit of a subtlety. It might be tucked into this letter. It's from Dave Diamond, a good close friend of Jackson's, Corporation Council of Buffalo, Jackson's friend for decades from Buffalo until the end of his life. Dear Bob, signed Dave, apologizing for not being at UV on October 4th. Um, and he doesn't really explain why. This letter from Judge Charles Wazanski a Jackson colleague in Washington, and by 1946, a federal judge in Boston, 
explains explicitly the coincidence that I think is worth noting. He's telling Jackson that he's been invited to speak at a conference. Uh, Robert Taft, senator from Ohio, famously spoke at this conference the next night at Kenyon College. But Wazanski says uh, he is unable to participate. I cannot deliver my paper at Kenyon College as the authorities had scheduled my talk for a Jewish holiday. October 4, 1946, unlike today, was a Friday. But this Friday, like that Friday, at sundown, becomes Kol Nidre, becomes the start of Yom Kippur. And I suspect Jackson in 1946 was oblivious to this, not Jewish. Uh, Dave Diamond Jewish, lots of Jackson's friends and colleagues, Jackson's Nuremberg Project, and some dimensions Jewish. But I suspect the University of Buffalo, in scheduling its centennial, was quite aware of this and had made sure that this Thursday, Friday event didn't create a Jewish holiday problem for those who observe that faith. Now, the rest of Jackson's life is the Supreme Court. The rest of Jackson's life is Nuremberg. And the two last parts of his 46th speech that I want to point to as I leave you with this tableau of him and his smiling colleagues on the Supreme Court are the following. The first is Jackson's long view. This is point number seven of his Nuremberg project. I won't quote it because his words deserve your direct reading. But read the final paragraph in the pamphlet of Jackson's October 4, 1946 speech. It's about Nuremberg coming to have its meaning long after Jackson's time will have passed. And of course, here we are. And here we are at the University of Buffalo. Because point number eight is a sentence tucked earlier in Jackson's speech, which I think I'll just jump out of here. UB is a site that, of course, he's speaking at in the music of all the Kleinhounds, but also as a center of learning and education that matters to Jackson. And this phrase reaches us 65 years later. The Nuremberg trial is not unlikely to influence legal thought in this institution's second century. And of course, here we are, which is a great honor. Thank you very much.